Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Rich Struess, as Freddie said. Uh, <clears throat> I'm the Chief Strategist for Cyber Threat Intelligence at MITRE. Uh, first of all, I wanted to thank uh, you all for coming here today. Uh, Freddie is correct. I did uh, come here just for this event uh, because this, this is the fourth one of the, these, right? And uh, invariably, this is one of the most interesting and useful gatherings of uh, the attack community I attend on a regular basis. Uh, Another interesting fact is on Monday we begin AttackCon in uh, McLean, Virginia. I'll have a slide or two on that uh, uh, later on. And so it's for me it's kind of an uh, interesting bookend. I fly back home tomorrow morning and then I get to see what uh, you know, another event is like it, but I, I think that, uh, you know, what this community has done, uh, in, in part just because of the energy of this, of, of you all, and then, uh, Freddie's, uh, sort of iron fist, uh, has, uh, has been great. So please keep it up. Uh, we're here to try to make this community better. Uh, you know, Freddie said, don't do a commercial. I'll talk about the MITRE Corporation, not for profit, been around about 60 years. Uh, and we're increasingly doing work in direct collaboration with the private sector around the world to try to advance freely available resources for the betterment of cybersecurity and other areas. But I'm particularly focused on cybersecurity, so um, everything you're going to hear about today are resources that we make available freely to the community. How many people here would say their organizations are currently uh, active uh, users of attack? How many of you would characterize yourselves as sophisticated users of attack? No one, see, no one wants to do that. No one's like, oh, you're sophisticated. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so it looks like the vast majority of the room, uh, you know, it, just a couple of points for uh, the, this will be the 30 seconds if you're not super familiar. Um, Encyclopedia of Adversary Knowledge based on publicly available reporting. This is not information that MITRE is releasing to the world. This is information that's been released by other organizations. We're curating it, collecting it, vetting it, and organizing it into one hopefully useful framework. Uh, I call it the Encyclopedia of Adversary Tradecraft. Um, attack keeps getting... Uh, keeps changing in shape and size. A lot of what I'm going to talk about today is uh, uh, continuing changes to the, uh, to the matrix. Um, you know, but I'm not going to really go through this. Um, <clears throat> so what I wanted to talk about uh, today, what Freddie asked me to, to uh, share with you, is sort of where we're going with attack. This is information that's you're really getting a preview in some sense of some of the uh, things that are going to be announced and discussed in detail at AttackCon next week. Uh, we have, you know, since I arrived at MITRE, uh, we've really been trying to uh, create one thing called attack. You know, when, when I arrived, it was sort of this fracturing and people were doing attack for this and attack for that and attack for, um, you know, the next thing. And uh, what we're trying to do is just talk about attack and try to harmonize the efforts because if you remember back a couple of years ago and even really to, to uh, today, uh, you go to look at pre-attack, you look at enterprise attack, you see, look at mobile attack, you'll see that there are differences between those. I mean, there, some of them are minor and stylistic in nature. Others are more structural in nature. And what we're trying to do is harmonize it. So if you're, if you become familiar with the way attack presents information, and which is what I just skipped over, you know, organizing as a set of tactics or adversaries' technical goals, and then the techniques, which are specific ways that adversaries achieve those goals, that should be consistent whether you're talking about an attack against an enterprise operating system like Windows, Linux, or Mac, or whether you're talking about a mobile device, whether you're talking about adversary reconnaissance or things, you know, sort of left of exploit, or if you're talking about cloud or ICS or any of the other things that we're working on right now. So we're really trying to harmonize this all. Um, <clears throat> There is an update that just got released yesterday. Uh, this is the October 2019 update. We've been trying to go to a, uh, about a quarterly update cadence, more or less. There are detailed release notes available uh, at that URL that'll tell you 
uh, in excruciating detail all the things that we have changed. Uh, we are mindful that when we make changes to attack, it has a ripple effect in the community. Uh, you know, we, we try to minimize those disruptions, uh, but we have some more disruption coming. And we want to sort of drill into that today because we want people to be prepared for it. We think ultimately it's going to be a win for the community. We think it'll be worth the effort uh, and the disruption, but we just want to make sure people have a, have a heads up what's going on. How many people here would say they're familiar with or use it? How many people here are familiar with pre-attack? How many people here are sort of active users of it? Okay, yeah, I mean, so, so, uh, this has been our observation. So pre-attack, you know, is <clears throat> a, um, a pretty, uh, a pretty big and, and rather, um, exhaustive, uh, recitation of all the different ways that, uh, adversaries go and plan their operations, uh, scope out their targeting, prepare for, uh, launching an attack. Uh, as you see, it's it's uh, pretty much as big as the enterprise attack matrix, or it's certainly of the sort of same rough order of magnitude. That's a lot of information. And so what we're uh, going to do is do some fundamental refactoring of pre-attack to really make it more in line with the rest of the attack ethos that is very practically driven kinds of things that operational users can use in their environment on a daily basis uh, to help their operations. So, you know, 15, techna 15 tactics, 144 techniques, all left of exploit. And if you dig into a lot of these things, you, you find that unless you have a very, very sophisticated infrastructure with a lot of external visibility, for lack of a better term, uh, a lot of this is not going to be particularly actionable. Um, so really what we're trying to do is uh, do this refactoring um, <clears throat> ultimately to drive to a significantly smaller number of techniques. Because we, we, in our evaluation, we really think for the, you know, operational community, there's really only just a subset, a relatively small subset, that are the things that are going to actually be usable by your typical practitioner out there in the cyber defense community. Um, so, you know, that that's technical in nature. We're trying to get away from some of the more sort of strategic level uh, intelligence gathering aspects of pre-attack and really focus it more on if you're, if you're, uh, you know, in cyber defense, you know, here are some of the technical things that you can look at to get a better understanding of adversaries pre-compromise, uh, activities. So we think that's going to be valuable. If you're depending upon the other stuff in pre-attack, you know, we never take anything away. You know, we always will provide, uh, you know, some, uh, archived copy of this content someplace up on the uh, in the attack infrastructure, but we think that's important. So those are some of the changes we're going to be making to pre-attack in the coming months. Uh, how many people here are, are users or are familiar with mobile attack? Wow, less than pre-attack. How many people here are surprised that such a thing exists? Like, there's a mobile attack? How many people here are actually awake? <laughs> okay, good. <clears throat> so, uh, we're doing, an, and, and again, this, uh, so the general theme is how do we take sort of multiple disparate, uh, efforts, uh, or at least what appear to be multiple disparate efforts and continue to harmonize them so that when you become familiar with using attack, whether it's enterprise attack to start or any of the others, that, you know, as we add new platforms and new technology domains, that, uh, to, from, from your perspective, oh, it's just, new content in the same basic structure and format. So as you build tools that access the structured versions of the attack knowledge base, you know, it should work whether you're talking about enterprise attack techniques and tactics or mobile or pre-attack or cloud or industrial control systems. So that's really our goal. So we have a bunch of uh, updates that we're doing on mobile attack. Um, what, you know, again, the, the number one thing I would say is this, you know, continued harmonization. Uh, and we've actually borrowed some things that were in mobile attacks. So if you're familiar with mobile attacks mitigation structure, which had a more formal mitigation structure, we're actually bringing a version of that over and harmonizing around that throughout attack. 
So uh, again, we're <clears throat> we are always looking for external contributions of content. How many people here have contributed content into Attack? Okay, we'd love to get that number up. Again, where does the information in Attack come from? It comes from publicly available uh, resources. You know, people have. Uh, released a threat report or a blog post, or they've done some research um, and then contributed to to us. About you know seventy, at least seventy five percent of the content in Attack is uh, originates with external sources. So you know this is our resource as a community. So if you uh, have information about a particular threat group that you're at liberty to share that's not in Attack today, contribute it. We'll work. We'll work with you to, to structure that in, in a way that's consistent with the rest of the attack knowledge base. We'll give you credit if you want credit. We will give, we will not give you credit if you don't want credit. Um, but, you know, so, uh, the simplest way is you go to attack.miter.org, uh, or send an email to, uh, attack at miter.org. Um, and, uh, we are working on ways to make it easier for people to contribute, uh, and I'm happy to talk about that later if we have a little time. Uh, you know, we continue to have, uh, you know, uh, the community asking for some kind of an issue tracking system so we can uh, know what people are working on. That's something that we have uh, uh, under active consideration. Uh, but if you have specific uh, thoughts on that, love to talk to you more. Let me let me make sure we get through all of this content because there's a lot here. Uh, so essentially, on mobile attack, we have um, you know uh, we have changes coming, uh, updating techniques, adding new techniques. Uh, but again, everything is trying to drive to one consistent uh, presentation of attack knowledge. Uh, sub techniques. How many people here are familiar with what we're doing on sub techniques? Some of you. So one of the the, the significant issues uh, with attack, you know, as as popular as it is, and as much as we think it's a useful tool, uh, you know, when used appropriately, uh, the reality is it's not perfect, and there are certainly areas where I think if you had to pick sort of what one of the bigger issues with attack is, it's the differing levels of abstraction. That is, if you look at the enterprise attack matrix in particular, you'll see some techniques that are really, really abstract, and then you'll see uh, and, and encompass a lot of different behavior, and then you see other techniques that are really granular, it seems. And, you know, you in the community have noticed this, we've noticed this, uh, and so what we've, uh, and, you know, so there's an example, scripting versus run, thir run DLL 32, um, you know, are, are, I think, a good example of those. So we are in the process, and we've, uh, Blake, Blake Strom released a um, blog post about this a couple of months ago, maybe three months ago now, talking about the work that we're doing around sub-techniques to prepare the community for what is going to be a major change. Um, but we, again, we think it's going to be ultimately worth the interim pain that this, uh, this change is going to uh, cause. So, for example, credential dumping as a technique, there are nine there are really nine techniques in the credential dumping technique today, uh, as you see listed here. So a lot of stuff in there. So if you say, hey, uh, we, we detect credential dumping as expressed in attack, do you really cover all nine? Or do you cover, um, you know, SAM credentials and a couple of others? So, you know, with, with only having the ability to, in terms of the technique IDs, reference, you know, at this level of granularity, it's not great. And then if you wind up saying, oh, we, yeah, we, we cover or we detect, uh, credential dumping in attack. And you say, oh, but really what we mean is just this one, this one, this one. You know, that's, we're getting away from the, the, one of the uh, advantages of attack, that ability to quickly and concisely and, and unambiguously refer to specific adversary behavior. So, what do we do about this? So <clears throat> we're refactoring techniques like credential dumping. 
and the overall matrix to have the notion of techniques at the top level as the parent, and then some techniques will have sub-techniques or child nodes that are linked to the parent that are all under that overall parent technique, but then represent significantly different ways of implementing that such that we feel it rises to the level of a sub-technique. So instead of having uh, one technique with a bunch of stuff just sort of shoved into it, we now have the parent technique credential dumping, and we have nine uh, and, you know, it can grow over time, separately identified sub-techniques in there. So now our goal is that if what you can do is, uh, uh, you know, you'll now be able to very specifically reference the sub-technique that uh, you are interested in. Maybe it's, you know, as a red team, oh, yeah, we're going to use this particular credential dumping sub-technique uh, this afternoon uh, as opposed to just having to then do a lot of words. So, uh, what we're doing, so, so this is going to result in some, as, as you refactor, think about, you know, it's not unlike code, you're going to move some stuff around. So we're actually creating some, now that we have this ability, or we will have this ability to have this simple hierarchy, two-level hierarchy, we're not going any deeper, um, it creates the opportunity for us to take and create some parent nodes. So pre-OS boot is an example of a new technique. Uh, and you see underneath there, there are three, uh, three sub-techniques. Uh, so boot kit was a top-level technique in Enterprise Attack. And when we implement this change, and these are all still in the, in the planning implementation phase, we are, this, if you go to attack.mitre.org today, you know, we still haven't implemented this in the live version, but this is where we're heading. Um, you'll see that bootkit, which was a technique, has gotten demoted uh, to a sub-technique under the new technique pre-OS boot. So is that clear? Are there any, you know, fundamental questions about that? Or, you know, this is a significant change. Uh, you know, so if you had things mapped to the matrix, the, the shape uh, of the matrix is going to change a little. Um, we're going to continue to present it as top-level techniques. Uh, but we are working to take the attack navigator, for example, and have it add the ability to view sub-techniques and manipulate sub-techniques. Um, as uh, easily as possible. So our goal continues to be that you can use attack as a communications tool, because I think actually that's probably the most fundamental use case of attack, is that ability to quickly uh, present a view of something, whether it's your defensive coverage, what, what uh, adversary behavior a product detects, uh, what the results of a red, blue exercise had been, whatever it is, I think, you know, that ability to communicate it succinctly in an, you know, in a color-coded attack matrix is a, is a key, uh, attribute and a, and a key, uh, a key value of attack. So we're trying to preserve that, but at the same time address this level of abstraction issue. So, uh, you know, we're going to try to do everything to make it easier for people to accommodate this change. This is, uh, again, we're, we're not sugarcoating it. This is going to, this is going to be disruptive to some folks. Uh, but at the same time, I think it's worth it. Of course, the entire attack knowledge base is, uh, in fact, our authoritative repository is based on a collection of 6.2 objects, which contain the full knowledge base. Uh, that will continue here. Uh, so this will all be represented, uh, in 6.2 available, um, through our public taxi server uh, and up on the GitHub site. So all of this structure will be present in the in the Sticks data. You can use the Sticks 2 APIs to access this and manipulate it. So we think this is a win, but there will be some pain. Um, <clears throat> so now we're introducing the notion of uh, addressing schemes so you can address a particular sub-technique. You know, uh, one of the things that we still want to do maybe on a, you know, not on a formal basis, but an informal basis is define some semantics around what it means to say, um, hey, uh, I cover uh, T1134. 
you know, well, when you say that, does that mean you cover all of the sub-techniques? You know, what, what is uh, sort of the scope of a statement around that, uh, you know, to help the community set expectations? Uh, you know, so if you talk about the top-level technique, you know, are you making an assertion about all of its children, uh, all of its children at a particular point in time? Are you just talking about the level of detail at that uh, parent technique or whatever? So as you see, uh, you'll now be able to directly address <coughs> um, the sub-techniques if you choose to. I think that's going to be good, especially when we're talking about situations where we want to talk about, uh, you know, the ability to detect. Like in our organization, we can detect T1134.001, you know, the ability to be really specific if it's appropriate, I think is, is, uh, is a good thing. Um, <coughs> So I've already sort of talked about this, you know, again, you know, this refactoring, we're going to take, so, so in this example, you know, account manipulation process injection, uh, actually we took and created sub-techniques from content that had been in there. Um, uh, you see the changes to local job scheduling, uh, and then things move around. So we're going to try to provide you a treasure map that says if you were looking for this technique today, hey, that content has moved as a sub-technique under another existing technique or a new technique, like I showed you with pre-boot uh, uh, pre stuff, uh, or hey, this content's been, been spread across a couple of other techniques. So again, we'll, we'll try to make that really clear as we go. Uh, we also are making some changes as we go through this. There are things we find that are less than ideal. Uh, so, you know, we've, as it says here, we've pruned back some techniques. Uh, and uh, the other important thing is, one of the reasons I think attack has is, is been super useful to the community is it's based on real world stuff, right? This is not a speculative taxonomy of all things adversaries might theoretically do. This is based on publicly reported adversary behavior. Um, so in the case of hypervisor, uh, at least uh, as of today, we actually haven't received any documented real world, hey, adversaries have actually used this specific technique to achieve objectives. Uh, so we're going to deprecate that technique. Uh, if you have specific information about that's you know, publicly releasable uh, about the use of that technique, let us know. So we would not deprecate it. Otherwise, it's going to be deprecated. We're really trying to be as serious as possible about when you look at something in attack, you don't have to ask the question, yeah, but has anyone really done this? Hopefully, by definition, if it's in attack, that's uh, that's what it means. Okay, uh, so I think we understand what the what the benefits are, um, and and hopefully what this does is allows us to do as we improve our mappings, and we'll talk about mappings in a second. Uh, you know, you'll be able to map to either an overall parent technique or a specific sub technique if that's appropriate. Uh, if you want to give us feedback on this, and we've gotten some great community feedback over the last few weeks on this, thank you. Uh, email at us, attack.miter.org. Excuse me. Yeah. And uh, with a subject line, sub-technique feedback, uh, and we'll collect all that and try to do everything we can. We are working to get this out before the end of the year. We're going to have a rollout uh, that, so that provides the existing attack knowledge base for the foreseeable future. You know, available. <clears throat> that structured content's not going to go away. You know, so hopefully we don't uh, pull the uh, rug out from under anyone. Uh, obviously, there's lots of different ways this can affect it. If you want to talk more about this afterwards, I'm happy to do that. Um, and again, mapping of intelligence is something we're going to have to continually uh, update as we go on. And we're working on some tooling to help make this easier. Uh, control mappings is an area we've gotten a lot of interest in. A lot of people in the community have done, you know, some work, some, uh, a lot of great work, in fact, on taking and doing a mapping of security control families, whether it's 853, uh, NIST cybersecurity framework, uh, SANS, uh, you know, uh, Center for Internet Security, 20 critical controls, whatever it is, there's been a lot of work done to do those mappings, but they weren't available as a publicly uh, accessible resource. We're working 
uh, on this right now. Uh, next week, we're going to release a template mapping to security controls so that you, you know, our goal over time is we will have one baseline authoritative reference that says from a community perspective, if you want to understand what controls across those different control families might be relevant to a particular uh, technique and attack, uh, that we can provide that information as, pack, as part of the attack knowledge base. Um, we are not going to do all the mappings. Uh, the folks in the community have done that, uh, and there'll probably be some differences of, of opinion or some, you know, differences within a give, given organization about the applicability of a particular control as implemented within an organization. What we're going to try to do is work at a slightly higher level, you know, is it possible for this control to be applicable to a particular adversary technique, whether or not your particular implementation of that control is, in fact, impactful to that technique is, you know, your mileage may vary, but we think it's going to be an important resource so that instead of everyone doing it themselves, we can have one, uh, we can have one set of hopefully somewhat authoritative mappings that can serve as a, as a baseline resource. Uh, so, you know, just as an example of uh, mapping, uh, in this case for 853, again, our goal is to do it in a way that if there's a particular set of control, the controls that are interesting to you, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, based on geography or, or sort of local regulatory authorities that you could, you know, build your own mappings to those as well. We're doing a lot of work on cloud. Um, we, in fact, as of yesterday, just released our initial work. This is initial work. There's a lot more to be done on cloud-based uh, uh, adversary behavior. But we're doing it. What we decided to do, originally we thought we were going to have a new, technolo a new technology domain, just like we have mobile and enterprise. But we've actually, at the moment, taken and just added new platforms into enterprise attack. And you'll see... Uh, three infrastructure as a service platforms in the content now for AWS, Azure, and um, uh, GCP. So, you know, this is now uh, cloud platform specific uh, adversary behavior to achieve uh, techniques in the enterprise attack matrix. Uh, and we've also added two SaaS platforms into enterprise attack as well, one for AD and the other for Office 365. So you can actually start to now have a place to go to look for um, specific adversary behavior against those uh, cloud environments and, that, and those SaaS technologies. And we've also added 36 techniques as a result of this that are now cloud specific or related to cloud in some way. Again, this is just the beginning of the work on cloud. We're not done by any stretch of the imagination, uh, but, you know, encourage you if cloud is of interest, and it's hard to imagine anyone where cloud is not of interest, uh, you know, to start digging into it. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you don't like. Uh, and as always, if you have contributions, uh, please uh, consider contributing them back to the community. Um, we, I talked about attack sightings last time. Uh, just it continues to be an area that we're doing a lot of work on. That is, if you have information about you know detections mapped to attack techniques, and you're willing to share those detections, what we're going to do is we are doing is aggregating those, bringing those in, so we can provide an anonymized, aggregated set of heat maps for the community about frequency of detection relative frequency of detection for different adversary behaviors is expressed in attack. So if you're operating a threat intelligence platform or you're an MSSP and you have information detections, we're happy to work. We'd love to work with you uh, to uh, anonymize that information, protect it so the identity of the particular end user or uh, infrastructure where the technique was detected is, is not revealed, but that the, the key pieces of information around, we detected T1088 at this timestamp in this geography in financial services, that information could be contributed, put into our repository, aggregated in such a way that it can't be re-identified back to you, the contributor, or the, uh, the place where it was detected. Uh, we think this is a critically important resource. I call this adversary footprints. 
Um, and we really want, uh, but this will only be as effective and, and as uh, useful as we have a broad spectrum of contributors of this information. So, you know, if you're interested in this, please come talk to me afterwards. We'd love to, uh, we'd love to, you know, have more of you contribute. Uh, we continue to do work on the CAR, uh, analytics repository. We've done a fundamental reboot of this a number of months ago based on GitHub. Try to make it as a template, not only for the content that we produce, but also that other people can go clone that repository and use it for your for your own purposes. Uh, if you have any questions, let us know. AttackCon, as I said, is next Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, if you're not going to be there, which most of you probably are not going to be uh, flying there because you're not as dumb as I am, uh, the entire conference will be live streamed, and uh, you can register for that live stream at the URL uh, down there. Uh, one of the, the things that we made a, a key point of when we were planning for TechCon 2.0 is that the live stream would actually be as uh, uh, as useful as possible. And it's not just sort of a warmed over version of the live event, but we actually have a full-time moderator who's there. There's going to be content on the live stream that's not available to people who are going to be in McLean, Virginia. So we're really taking it seriously as, you know, uh, an event that you'll want to, uh, that you'll want to watch. There's not going to be a lot of dead air time. So, you know, sign up for the live stream. The content will be, uh, then provided up on YouTube, like uh, for AttackCon 1.0. It's a great lineup of, uh, talks. So please take a look at that. Another really important resource with a long URL. Uh, we did four blog posts recently on getting started with attack. Those have been combined all together into one freely downloadable. You don't have to register to get it ebook um, at that URL. So if so, if you have colleagues or people in your organization are saying, how do I even start to use attack? W where do I begin? It's a really good resource uh, that we're making available. Uh, you know, download it, take a look at it. As always, if you have ideas for how to improve it, please let us know. This is a community resource. It's, uh, you know, we depend upon, uh, you know, the community's input. And with that, uh, before Freddie kicks me off, thank you very much.